Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. This morning, Ubiquity released a new network controller version 6.5.51. That is absolutely huge. They've done a ton of improvements as well as bug fixes. We're going to go through some of those improvements as well as some of the fixes, and I'll show you how to upgrade on your UDM Pro through an SSH command line. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks, and we have a Discord server, and I'll put a link in the description below. Like always, if you don't want to watch me reading the list of improvements and bug fixes, I will put the link in the description for this update. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to upgrade the Unify Network Controller to 6.5.51. If we scroll down on this update, we could see in the comments that somebody has posted the script that we need to run. So right here, you can see we need to go into the Unify OS shell and then copy and paste this. In saying this, you should always do your research to make sure there's not bugs in the firmware version. This is the first time I'm going to be running this and I haven't tested it at all. So what we're going to need to do, we need to go to our UDM Pro and then go to Advanced. Under Advanced, we need to check on the toggle switch for SSH. And then we need to create an SSH password. And once the password's put in, press Confirm. Now the password's in, we need to point to the IP of our UDM Pro. So mine's 192.168.10.1, and we'll press open. We're going to log in as root, and then the password will be the password that we set. Now we're into the Unified Dream Machine, and we need to type in unify-os shell. And this brings us into the Unify OS shell. Now we'll go back to the post, and we'll copy and paste this in. I'll right click to paste and then we'll press enter. And this is gonna take its time doing the update. So let's look over some of the changes. Okay, I'm gonna read off some of the improvements. So the first one, we add an icon for VPN clients in the client page. Then it adds a new traffic inspector page and then it adds traffic rules. So this requires UDM 1.1 firmware or newer. And then we have the ability to lock a client to a specific AP. This is huge. I have tons of clients asking me if they could lock their phone or their elliptical to a specific AP. And before this, they weren't able to, but now they can. We have added internet latency to dashboard for setups with the USG. We have an uplink port column in the devices page. Add secondary sort by connection type when sorting by the vendor on the clients page. Then it adds support for ARP cache timeout for the UDM and the UXG. It adds a create Wi-Fi toast when adopting AP without existing Wi-Fi, which I'm not exactly sure what that means, but we'll find out after a few days of testing. It adds DFS channels to default Wi-Fi AI exclude channel list. It adds informative tooltips in the Wi-Fi settings, improve client name display, improve reliability on upgrade process. It defaults to the active WAN in the dashboard and then reorder traffic in security setting order. It recenters the topology when the filter is changed. And then we have hide offline devices by default in the topology, which is great. It displays VPN client network name, VPN settings optimization, and then remove system utilization from the dashboard. Now let's look at a few of the bug fixes. So we have stop retrying devices auto update after three failed attempts, which I think is awesome. I've had devices where they just keep failing adoption and I could never unmanage them from my Unify controller. It fixes the device scaling issue in a topology on Safari browser, fix unable to remove an administrator from sites, fix the ULTE Pro adoption model network selection, fix the user interface crash in the hotspot form, fix element adoption when the site has radius assigned VLAN SSID. They fix an issue with a honeypot where you could refer to a deleted network, fix visual text overflows for the long client names. They have a fixed hotspot form security settings when using WPA3. It fixes a MAC address clone field formatting and a ton more. There's just too much for me to go over, but if you're really curious, I would check this out. Okay, so now let's take a look at some of these changes. Most of the changes are done in the new user interface and you won't find them in the classic interface. So we could see down below that we now have this new latency for our ISP connection. I'm getting about 12 milliseconds latency. So I think the biggest one that people will want to see is locking a specific client to a specific AP. So we'll go over to our client list and I'll click on one of the clients. So we'll click on my PlayStation 5. Now to lock it to a specific AP, we need to go to settings and we could see here lock to access point. 
there's an eye circle and it says configure your device to only use a specific access point. We'll click the toggle switch on. And right now it's connected to my master AP and we could apply changes and that will be the access point that it always goes to. If we wanted to go to a different AP, we could select different access point. And then this will show an access point list of what we have connected. So that's a great new feature that they've added and I'm really happy they've done it. Next up, we could take a look at the traffic inspector. Here it's gonna show us all of our types of traffic and then it will show the threat severity if we wanna have that on. Right now we can't see anything there. We also have a transfer size that we could turn on or off. We could set it between one megabit and one gigabit. We could also see traffic during specific dates and times. So at 1 p.m., 7 a.m., 6 a.m., 5 a.m., so on and so forth. If we click on the plus button, it will show us the services that were running during that specific time. Also, I'm not too sure if this is new or not. I usually never look at the new user interface, but I think I might start as they've added quite a bit. We could see Wi-Fi channel interference. So it's showing us our 2.4 and our 5 gigahertz, and it's showing us the different channels that are being utilized. And if we go over top of one of these channels, we could see which SSID is using this, and that would be one of my neighbors. Another really awesome addition is the traffic rules and routes. So we can see under rules, set parameters for how your network is used. You can specify which domain port and application can be accessed, how often, and even limit the bandwidth dedicated to specific traffic types. We have action where we could permit or prohibit specific network traffic. We have matching so we could select the application domains or port that this rule will apply to. We have the device so we could select a client out of our device list and speed limit and schedule that's coming soon. So we could show an example. So the example, if you would like to block network on John's iPhone every day between 9 a.m. and 12 p.m. every day and you would create the following rule, action block matching Netflix, device John's iPhone, and then the schedule. So let's go ahead and create a rule. So we'll create new rule. The description will be block Facebook. Our action will be to block and the target will be an app. The app that we're looking for is Facebook. If we want to do multiple different apps, we could select more than one. And then we want to select the device. My computer is on 192.168.10.58. For some reason, it doesn't allow you to sort by IP, but we'll scroll down and then we'll find it. And here we go. We could see my desktop at 192.168.10.58. We'll click that. And again, we could select multiple different devices. We'll just leave it at this one computer for now and we'll add the rule. We could see the rule has been enabled, the action is the block, and it's matching an app on desktop, and we're blocking Facebook. That's the description I've given it. So now let's open up a new browser, and then we'll see if we could get to Facebook. So I'll type in facebook.com, and it looks as though that traffic is blocked, which is awesome. You could also create a rule to block on whichever network. So if we don't want any of our guests to be able to go to Netflix, Facebook, whatever, we could do it by the full subnet. There's a lot to unpack in this update and I'm going to test it out over the next week and see what I could find that's new and hopefully there aren't too many bugs. And that's going to be it for this video. I may release another video of what I find is new after I do a bit more testing. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.